From In the Beginning to the Musical Apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman, and I encourage you to grab your Bibles and follow along as I talk with an assistant pastor who not only struggles to find love in the Bible, but fails with every analogy to prove that his deity is loving. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> Okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't you figure this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. That, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Exodus. I was going through Exodus and going through the whole um, Passover. And okay. this blood was required to put on the doorways. And there were a lot of little details in those the specifications, you know, to put the blood on there. You had to have your shirt tucked in while you ate it. You had to have your shoes on. You couldn't eat the meat raw or cooked in water. Um, let's say Exodus 12. And um, you had to have your staff in your hand, and it, it, it couldn't have any um, – it had to be slaughtered at twilight. So why? Why did it have to be slaughtered at twilight? Why did it have to be uh, charred or whatever and not boiled and eaten raw? Why all these, these petty stipulations? Why? In the book of Exodus? Yeah, Exodus 12. Exodus 12, and he, and he goes over the whole stipulations and why he wants them to, or what he wants them to do to this animal before they take its blood and put it on a doorway, just so he yeah. knows that that's the right house to not go in and kill people. Yeah. Well, um, I'd say that, I'd say that they didn't know at the time why they were even killing a lamb, right? There's symbolism there that they don't that they didn't see at the time that we can see really clearly now. So um, I have a feeling God has a good answer for that. Um, so you believe it was? Do you have Do you have a thing? Um, so, do you have a Do you have a thing? I don't think God does very much that's arbitrary, but I think at the same time you can get pretty off the deep end if you try to symbolize everything, right? So you know, so, right. somewhere in the mix there. So, I'm curious. What are you thinking about it? I'm just curious as to why he needed the blood in the first place on the door. If if he's supposed to know that, he's supposed to know everything, and he he, he can easily distinguish his own people from the Egyptians when he comes in to kill people in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So why does he need the blood on the door in order to know which people are his? It just doesn't make any sense. There's There's a... I mean, obviously, the people need to be aware of that. The people are getting an identity, right? I mean, that's that's part of it. They're understanding that they're the people of God, um, and he's making them part of the process. Obviously, it's not necessary for him to make us part of the process in anything, right? Um, well, he doesn't really need us whatsoever, but he chooses, right? He chooses to work through people in a lot of things. He doesn't um, – he's kind of put us in charge down here, and even when he intervenes. A lot of times he makes this part of the process, right? Jesus um, mm. could have just healed everyone, but, you know, and there's, yeah, right. there's, those are some good questions. Why didn't he? Why is there, yeah, why is there, why is there any problems in the first place? Yeah, um, that's a good question, too. And, and when, when you get down to it, apparently there's some things that are worth more than everything being perfect. Um I know, you know, freedom, he put people in charge, right? This whole thing, I don't, I'm sure that I don't understand it. Right. But everything going on down here is apparently somewhat um, like the, like the great American experiment, right? It's, 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 there's freedom and people have the freedom to do real harm and real good and we get to actually matter. So we're all part um, of Yahweh's experiment? 
not not so much experiment in a clinical sense of showing but but um you know, he created us. I don't think he arbitrarily created us with the ability to sin. I think the way we are is the way we had to be, just like I think, um, like good and evil. I don't think good and evil are arbitrary. Mm. I think there is a good and there is an evil, and I think even God is probably bound by that, and he chooses to be good, but I think there's a good that God chooses to be rather than it just being. So do you, you know, think the Passover was a good thing? I think that everything God does, he does for a good reason. His reasoning um, for doing the Passover, do you know? His reasoning for the Passover? I mean, ultimately, nobody knows um, well, he says it right here, what's reason, in the mind of God, well, because we don't have... Well, the Bible is the um, mind of God. It's, these, are, these are his actual yeah. breathed-out words. Second Timothy 3.16, Every all scriptures God breathes. This is his words. This is his history. Mm -hmm. um, and in it, in Exodus 9... 16, but I have raised you up. He's talking about Pharaoh. I have raised you up for this purpose that I might show my power, that my name mm -hmm. might be proclaimed in all the earth. So that is why he's doing this. So his name can be proclaimed in all the earth so that his power can be shown. So he's going to, in verse 12, chapter, or chapter 12, verse 9, at midnight the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt. So he went into these houses that did not have blood on the door and killed children in their sleep. To show off his powers. He admits it right here. He confesses. I'm doing this to show off my mm -hmm. powers. And um, later on he says that he does it so that the Egyptians will know that he is God. So he kills children so people know he's God? Why does he need the blood? Huh? He knows everything. He knows that these, these people that are inside these buildings are his people. These are his Israelite special chosen people. Why does he mm -hmm. need to put blood on the door in order to stop himself from going in and killing children? Yeah, that's – that's. Um, I wouldn't phrase it that way, but that yeah, is a well, very hard question. Probably not. I have thought about a lot of that stuff. Um, Tough questions, man. You know, there's a – there's a – there's a – there's things that God understands. That's why it's dangerous for us to, you know, take that, take that. Why is it dangerous? Um, it's dangerous for us to behave that way. God has all knowledge, right? So if I start justifying some things to myself, I can make a case where I say some really bizarre things could be justified, right? Like, okay, we have a guy that's in New York City. He has a nuke planted somewhere. It's going to go off in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, he's ready to be a martyr. Um, okay, so he's so got this he's nuke, ready right? to be tortured, but he, right? So is it so okay he to sends torture his him? Son, right, so he sends his Just son to die Just to save everybody. So he won't put the nuke off. That's what that's what Listen. Yahweh does. He sends his son to so die, so he won't kill everybody. He's the man with the nuke. Yahweh's the guy with the nuke. Let me finish. Okay, go ahead. Let me finish. Okay. Um, and I, I, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll <laughs> do this as long. I'll do this as long as I think I can justify doing the thing because I am. I do like conversations like this. I kind of have a, have a thing for them, but good. Uh, Okay, so he he has a he has a um right, so he's you know, is it okay to torture him? And you know, standard thing that professor's gonna ask kids in like an ethics class, right? Right. Well, and even though they don't believe in torture, maybe in this case it's okay to torture him. And he goes, Okay, he won't tell you anything, but he has a daughter that he loves very much and a million people are about to die. Is it okay to torture her even though she's innocent, right? Um and uh -huh. you get mixed things out of a class that just said that they were totally not okay with torture, right? I guess. Um, and it's interesting to see people work through that and be like, um, you know, what's 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 the what's I, just, I don't believe that, but maybe I do believe that, but maybe I don't. Um, right. Life is really really complicated. Yeah, and the Bible is even more. If complicated. I know anything. If I know anything, it's that I don't understand it all, and I know that it's easy to judge everything. Right, right, right now in the world, everybody has a fetish for judging everyone in history through their lens. Of well, right the, now. the issue, the issue is we can both judge uh, people that, that kill children. If somebody's going to kill a child in order to show off their power, mm -hmm. we can both judge that person and say that that is not a good thing. That person is not a good guy. But when it comes to Yahweh, when he kills children in their sleep to glorify himself, to seek praise for himself, or to seek attention, 
it's okay because, well, you know, he's Yahweh. Right? I mean, how does this work? And as as difficult as that is, um, I would say ultimately, mm-hmm. yes, that for him to do some things, that he can do some things that would be wrong for me, um, that wouldn't be wrong for him. I think I think that is a little, um, I think that's framed mm. in a way that is a little um, inaccurate, but I think at the bottom of it, there is a truth there Ooh. that you're saying. Right? What's, what's inaccurate about the way I things. framed it? Um, it's, it's very biblically accurate. I'm killing the children, passages. seeking, a, no, absolutely, but you're saying he's killing them, seeking attention. Right, he wants to, um, he wants to be known he wants to be what is it, so that I might show you my power, that my name Absolutely. might be proclaimed in all the earth. My name be proclaimed. He's seeking attention. Okay. He wants these people to know that he is God. So by doing this, yes, for what purpose? Right. Well, for so what he purpose can, does he want them to know that he's God? Because he needs an ego boost. Um, why? Why I do think, you think I think that's the implication of what you're saying is that he wants an ego boost, and therefore that's he's what he's an ego me. boost. Well, what other reasons no. did he give? It? He didn't give any other reasons here. What was the other reason? Um, he's coming into a society that is, you know, um, a society and a world that has forgotten about him, and he is the thing that they need, right? No. No, these people, um, they cried out for him to be saved because they were in slavery. So what he did is he punished mm-hmm. the Egyptians. And then he punished children. Yes, and I think in some, in some ways um, that's, there is some level of justice to that, and I don't, I don't like that. Was personally. there another right? way? When I teach my, when I teach my American government class, I say justice is an individual thing, not a group thing. Hmm. Um, and whenever you get into, um, whenever you get into punishing a group for what an individual did for you, it's really easy to start things, start cycles that right. never end. Exodus right. 20, verse 5. Um, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the sins of their father to the third and fourth generation. He punishes people to the third and fourth children. Not just people, but children mm-hmm. to the fourth generation. Yes. This isn't, this, none of this is justifiable. None of this is justifiable. Why would he kill, why would he kill uh, children in the Exodus? What is a good reason to kill children? Why is there ever a good reason to kill a child? There's never a good reason yeah. to kill a child. I'm sure we can hope we hope we both agree on that one, right? <laughs> I know there's never a good reason. F- I know that I will never kill a child. Right. Well, um, yeah. But the I know that I does. also don't know all of. I don't know hearts, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't understand. I know that it is very possible for children to be evil, right? Because I've seen enough of life to know that. Um, right. I've seen groups of children be brutally cruel to each other, right? Um, psychologically, and I've seen children that certainly would murder if they had the possibility of doing it. Right. Um, I guess. So there is a thing. There is a thing about like the innocent child that that may or may not, um, you know, always. I mean, that's always a slam dunk when you're like, oh my goodness, killing children. Right, but you this know, is but a I whole. Do, I do, you do have a good, you do have a point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just one, one or second. two children that could have been bad. It was, yeah, all of Egypt. You got to you got to give me thirty seconds. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Um. So um, if, if, if you're yeah. okay with the, the children in in the Exodus, those are okay. That's justified. Um, I'm okay, okay with whatever God does. Okay, Hosea Even nine I eleven don't understand it, right? So ultimately, it comes ultimately it comes to that. I want to understand it, Why? and I'm generally I generally um, you know I ask I ask those questions on my on my own at some point. God right. is not a fluffy giant teddy bear in the sky that's somewhere between you know Santa Claus and Mother Teresa, like a lot of modern Christianity. Um would kind of characterize him. I think the mm-hmm. other thing that people don't that people don't understand is um when you read scripture you know Paul had no the, the apostle Paul again he served a fairly um he didn't serve a real fluffy god mm-hmm. um, when he became a servant of Jesus, right? He 
enters on a life where he gets beat, he gets hurt, he gets messed all up. Um, right. And but why? He, you know, he doesn't serve. He serves a God that does that, but he's okay to serve that God because he does. He sees he sees his suffering as less in, than what his God has suffered. Where, where, um, why, for the purpose. Whoa. Why did God have to suffer? Um, Paul had no concept of a trinity, right? Um, really, Scripture has no concept of a trinity. Um, and I think some of the some of the some of the one of the things that's important to understand is hmm. when 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 right when Paul says, "Who art thou, Lord?" Right? He's asking. Uh-huh. Right? God strikes him off the horse. He obviously he's persecuting Christians. He obviously um, he says, "I am Jesus." Right? He doesn't say. Um, that there's a second one. When Jesus is talking to his disciples, right, Jesus talks in his, in his terms of father, son, father, son quite a bit. Um, but when it comes down to the end of it, his disciples are asking him, show us the father, show us the father. And he said, have I been with you so long and you don't know me? Um, uh huh. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Okay. So people have this concept of God sending his son, which to me is almost blasphemous. If you see it as he created a second person. Mm-hmm. And sent him down to suffer because he wasn't willing to do it himself. We <laughs> understand that God, right? God created the people, and I think I think the the questionable moral um, step is when He created people in the first place. And That's I a good question that, too. Why um, did He create people? When in the He first created place? people, right? This is the this is the moment where when I get down to it, this is the question mm-hmm. why I ask God, why did you create people? Because I think almost everything that's happened since is somewhat of a result of that that choice, right? Uh, I guess, but yeah. What, uh, it, this takes a little bit, but you're asking very big questions. So yeah, no, so no, yeah. I'm totally, well I'm totally intrigued. Sound bite. Yeah. Totally intrigued. Um, so this is, this is kind of, this is kind of what it, what it looks like in my head. Um, I don't think he created people arbitrarily. Mm-hmm. I think we are a certain thing you know, with a will, with emotions. I don't think he could have created us without one emotion, right, or something like that. Because I think if he had arbitrarily created us, he would have created us. I think there's a truth that the natural world, you know, just reflects more than that it, um, you know, I don't think he arbitrarily said murder is bad, kindness to the unfortunate is good, and I'm just going to arbitrarily say that these are that way. I think those things actually are good and actually are bad. And again, right. So you think every, um, you're going to badly want you're bad. going to badly want to come and say. So you think the things he did are are good? Yes. But but let me finish. So, right. Um. Right. So so he created man, and then he mm-hmm. chose to give man freedom. And I think part of it is that to be good. Is not good unless it's by choice. Okay. Right. If you if you force someone to do the right thing, there's no virtue in that. There's no beauty in that. There's no nobility in that. If you're forced to do it, um, it's only worth something if it happens as choice. Right. Just like like life right. is not. So if I threaten um, to to torture you for life or for 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 eternity, if you don't do this, do you think that's a choice? Um, people don't, some people do in a very unhealthy way, and I don't think that even works. Right. I don't see how that's a choice, really. I'm saying, no, I'm saying I don't, I don't think people do it for that reason. I think if people are just serving God over that, they find a way to believe something different. Because the cool thing is that people, um, well, the cool and terrifying thing is people have the ability to choose what to believe. And I'm very right. convinced of that, right? You don't well, just have freedom of action. Because if you had to believe... But when you're threatening like, somebody with torture for the rest of your life, that kind of changes the whole choice, doesn't it? Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad see. to know that. Would you rather eat days sandwich? where that helps. Would you, would you rather have a sandwich with nothing in it or a sandwich that's <laughs> going to kill you and torture you for the rest of your life? It's not really much of a choice. I'm going to obviously go with the one that's not going to cause me harm. When you, when you have harm over, over non-harm... I don't really see how that's more of a that's more of a Definitely. threat than a choice. It's a threat. I see that as Definitely. a threat. I mean, it's that yeah. way. It's that way in 
but that I'm, I'm that analogy doesn't work. But it's it's right. that way uh, in. Um, let's see how your analogy works. Hey, right. Why did he create but, man in the first listen, place, though? What's, what's, did you so answer that I one? think there are some things. I think there is a good that came out of creating a bunch of living souls that had actual freedom. Okay. Um, this is this is this is this is okay. So he created he created a bunch of people. He created living souls with the ability to reproduce, um, and in some ways he he set a chain of things in motion. But that's not what free will is. If he set it in motion, he chose to love them. How how did he love them? He's he's killing them for picking up sticks and numbers. He's killing their their kids in the Passover in Hosea nine eleven. He he cha- he slays their cherished offspring. He he makes breath run dry mm-hmm. so that infants will starve to death. That's what he says in Hosea 9:11 through 17. How does that? How is that love? How is he showing love? Where does he show love to us? He's still there. The problem is that he's holy. I mean, the problem right. is that he that he that's sees it. justice. He sees the ugliness of sin, right? I I laugh at a guy that's drunk, but mm-hmm. I didn't see him come home and beat up his wife, right? He didn't. Um, well, he didn't co- kill and to, torture a child. To him. But beating up your wife and killing and torturing a child, those are two different extremes, correct? Clearly. Clearly. Um, so when Yahweh does Apparently, how is that love? The sin issue, right? A- apparently, this is an intermediate time right here. There's a lot of... There's a giant mess mm-hmm. here. So killing children is not going to make that mess any better. have free will. Listen, if you're Hitler, mm-hmm. right... Um. I'm a doctor, and I and I I pledge myself to save lives, right? And I save right. 300 lives before I die, and one of the lives that I save is Hitler, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Um, there's no possible way I could have understood the results of that choice, and that choice was, you know, of my choice to learn the things that I learned, and over overall, that choice has been bad for humanity. So you're saying these countless right. children were going to turn into Hitler, or a Hitler-like figure? No. Oh. No. Well, why did he have to I'm kill I'm saying that then? God does see the end from the beginning. He sees things. He's dealing with his ethics are mm. ethics that see the next three million years, right? His ethics, right. he understands all of that, and he makes choices. So these children were going to grow up to be bad the world. Bad things bad. are being demonstrated to be evil, demonstrated to be being good, because the un, right some things that have been invisible are being seen. Because Killing children now is evil in That's real what I'm world. Saying. Killing children is evil, and the reasons for doing it is evil. Isaiah 49, Isaiah 40, uh, <laughs> anyways, it's Isaiah something. Yahweh says he creates evil in the, in the King James Version. 45-7, there it is, Isaiah 45-7. I, the yeah. Lord, create evil. Uh, I mean, he's evil. I don't see any yes. love in here. Where's, um, where's well, I see that he is in the mess with us. How is he and in the mess I see with that us? He if chose he to care. Son, okay, he when I anything. care about somebody, uh-huh. no, he came. Well, he didn't, he didn't, I mean, the, the, the language is that way. I guess. Um, I don't see it as I don't see it, and again, none of the early Christians would have seen it that way either, well, um, as yeah. him creating another person to come suffer because he wasn't willing to suffer. Um, that makes better sense to a Greek mind, and right there's this massive syncretic urge where they want to um, make a religion that's more palatable in that right in that world. But right, he came. Right here's the here's the other thing: God completely has everything all together. I mean, he sure. chooses to care. <laughs> he didn't during the flood. He had about to everybody else. really, really broken people, right? He chooses to care about us. He chooses to um, kill their children. How does he care about us? Where's the care? Where is the love? Please tell me in this Bible. Listen. Where is the love? Listen. I'm listening. Man. Think of a cop. Uh huh. Think of a cop. Thinking of cop who's pledged himself to um, protect. Right. He's he's a cop, a career policeman. He raises a son. His son converts to Islam. He works on it, tries to get his mind straightened up. Um, but there's a day where his son is going to a shopping mall. He he realizes that his son has made a bomb, and he's going to a shopping mall, and he's going to kill a bunch of the people there. So he gets in his car, right? He drives there because it's the right thing to do. And there's a moment where he's got his pistol out, and he knows if his son takes another step, he's going to shoot him in the head. 
in the head. And it's still his little boy. He still loves his little boy. He still doesn't want Holy cow. this to happen this way. But he knows You're missing the point. I have to do this. The cop is the one with the bomb. The cop is the one. Yahweh is the one, not Jesus. Yahweh is the one that has put this punishment in place. The wages of sin is death. Romans 9. No. He didn't Wait. put the punishment in place. So Romans 6, 23. Evil is of evil. Sin is death. And he hates evil. The law was added so that trespass might increase. So if the wages of sin is death, they can then why it. would Yahweh so again, want when you increase? knowingly when you knowingly sin, it's worse than if you do it and you don't know. So in some ways, to tell somebody, to explain to someone, right, that what they're doing is wrong, when every time they do it, they understand that it's hurting other people, and what, right, um, oh, does make so, them a worse person if they don't deal with it. So Okay, so I like your analogy. <laughs> I'm going to give you one. I am this doctor, right, and I've got this miracle, uh, this miracle cure for cancer, but I'm also the one who created cancer. So I gave you cancer, but I also have the cure for cancer, but I'm not going to give you this cure for this cancer. Until I kill somebody, and then you can have this cure for cancer. But I'm the one that makes up the rules, and my rule that I made up is somebody has to die. The wages of I sin don't is think death. God makes up the rules. You don't, I think, don't think God, God makes, up, makes the up the rules? And I know that that's, that's, that's quite a, a shock. I would disagree with a lot of Christians on this. Wow. I think that think good and evil, uh -huh. I think a lot of things are. I think a lot of things are, and I are don't what? think God made them that way. I think they just are that way. Um, I think some things are beautiful and some things are ugly, and I don't think that. Um, I think some. I think right. There's a reality to good wow. and evil. Wow. So and I don't so think. In and I think that God, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Yahweh did not make that rule. Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Who made that rule? He did. But okay, I so think Yahweh made that rule. So you understand. Can he change that rule? There would have to be a thing. Right? Mean? There would have to be some, there would have to be, there would have to be some kind of an application. Justice is a thing that has to eventually happen. Well, uh -oh. killing children in their sleep is not justification for the sins of their parents. Killing children in their sleep might not necessarily be painful. Um, I think the people that it hurts when a child dies is the it's parents painful when you the children. When you die of starvation, Listen. it's painful when you drown to death. Yahweh does painful things True. to children. In Second Samuel, he strikes a child with sickness, and then seven days later it dies. Why? Because the enemies of Yahweh showed utter contempt. Second Samuel. Mm -hmm. Yahweh, Second Samuel. That's it. true. Second Samuel 12. He causes a child to be struck with sickness. He struck, struck the child with sickness himself. Why? Because somebody did not, because the enemy showed contempt. Is that a justification? Is that justified? How can you defend that action? I couldn't defend it if I had done it. But you didn't do it. Your God that you worship does. The God that you're telling me is loving. Kill children. I've only got one choice. So because he's the only choice, it's okay if he kills children. It's okay if he makes them suffer. It's okay if he makes them drown or starve to death. This is okay. Huh? Yeah, that's 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 a hard thing. I I. And you still believe God to be good? I believe God to be good. Why is he good? What did he do that, that was so me. great? One of the things that helps me is that I believe mm -hmm. that he is in the mess with us. I believe that he created us and that in that act of creation, he knew some level of, again, I don't know um, how much. I think he decided that freedom was worth it. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, at the end of all of this, I think that all of the people who make it through this will hate sin to a level and will, and will hate evil to a level that we will never want it again. Um, and that through all eternity, whatever the plan is that he has, because again, I don't think this is, this is his plan. I think this is a precursor to whatever he has planned for eternity. Um, again, how do you think ultimately, why is he good? What did he do? That's so great. 
It justifies the just things that are in you. Children. Uh-huh. The things that are in you that have a strong moral sense, right? I mean, I believe that God created us. Again, if, if he didn't create us, um, the fact that he put in us a strong sense of morality where we can be frustrated with it. His morality is killing children, sir. This is his Your morality. morality. If you believe that he created you, right? If you believe that there is a God and he made us, we understand he made us like him. I don't want to be like okay. him. Why would you want to be like a God that kills children in their sleep just to seek glorification for himself? Why would you want to, want to be like a God who starves children to death or, or drowns children because he, he, he messed up? He, he didn't have a good enough plan or, or, or the humans weren't right or something went wrong, so he had to drown children. That's a, that's a great answer. Why would, it, why would you – how is that loving? How is it you loving to drown children? You are created like him. I don't want to be you like a man that drowns like children. No, I, heard, I, heard, I, I hear you. You hear me. Good. Now, how um, is he loving? How is he loving? Tell me, where is the love? Where is the love of Yahweh that I keep hearing about? He loves me. Okay, he um, loves you. He so has, it's okay to kill children because he loves you. No. Okay, where's the love, man? I don't quite understand. I I don't quite understand it. This is what I know. Okay. My great grandfather got the Holy Ghost. Uh huh. He got a Holy it Ghost. Changed his life. Listen. <laughs> I'm listening, man. I'm listening. It made him a better person. It made him a better dad. It he had to have this holy, holy Ghost in order to be a better person, to be a better dad. He couldn't do this yes, on his own. Yes, because we were meant. We were meant. We were meant to operate. Right. We were never created to operate outside of like the spirit of God working in our life. Um, my grandparents, my parents, me, I've had an amazing life because my family has done, has tried to live by what that scripture says and has has been close to God. So that's the only reason you have an amazing life been, is because they were all Christians and they followed Yahweh's belief? What about the people who have an awesome life whose parents are atheists? What about the people who have an awesome life whose parents are mm-hmm. Hindus? That doesn't okay. correlate with what you're telling me, man. Where's the good? How is he good? No, what did he true. do that was Listen. so good? Listen, man. Tell me. What did he do that was so good? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I had... I, ah, I wish I could remember a thing. Um, okay, well, you said anyways, he can do... If, if, listen, okay. listen. If I am in a house... And my friend falls on the floor and is hurting, right? I was on a several-day pack trip, and one of the guys that I went with got appendicitis while we were out there. Uh-huh. Um, the, the, okay, so I'm at home, right? I have a cell phone with me. One of my friends has appendicitis. Uh-huh. So I, I recognize that. I know what it looks like, right? And so I Google it. I poke him different places. I say, hey, buddy, we're going to deal with this because I know exactly what this is. I whip out my pocket knife. And I do my very best. I steady my hand my very best. I try my hardest. And I cut into him. Uh-huh. And I take his appendix out. Okay. And then I sew him up. I do my very best. I watch the YouTube video twice on how to do an appendectomy, whatever. Okay. Right? And he dies. What okay. is the jury going to say? I'm going to tell them I did my best. And they're going to say, no, your best was to pick up the phone and call 911. Because your best wasn't good enough, so you should have, right, as a responsible person, you should have talked to the person who could do it. Um, And I know Uh you can say he set it up that way where we needed him. Right. Uh Uh-huh. Right. But Uh we need him and and to not (laughs) involve him in our life. I think you do. But, again, we know that we differ on that. Right, right. Um, I I choose not to worship a child-killing deity. So, you know, right off the bat. There I am. <laughs> yes. So, I think that he is God, and I think that ultimately he has it figured out, but I don't get it, right? So, at the end of the day, that's kind of it. I know that I don't get it. You know I that know you don't that. understand why he killed children to seek glorification for himself? Or you don't know how I don't to defend I don't understand why that. he did all the things that he did in the Old Testament. So, you don't know how to defend right? that? Right. You don't know, I don't how, to know how to defend, defend that. 
I don't know how to defend everything that God has done, no, because well, how about clearly just, he has more information so than I do. Just tell me where he's loving. And he understands That's a simple one, right? better. That's a simple one. Where, where in the Bible he does chose, it show Yahweh's love? Where does it show his love? Do you have a chapter and verse? Do you have a story that, that you like to say that shows his love? Is there anything Jesus. in there? I mean, clearly oh, Jesus man. comes, right? No Jesus way, dude. Is, is, no way. Um, There's no way. Okay, dies Yahweh created a bomb, a nuclear bomb. This nuclear bomb is hell. He's about to set it off. He's going to send everybody to hell. But what does he do? He creates a person, half himself, half human, in order to torture and kill just so he stops the bomb from some people who believe that he tortured and killed that guy. There is no love in that. There is no love in killing your, your son to save everybody from what you're about to do to them. There's no love in that. If you want love, damn, I snap my fingers, I forgive he you, I'm not going to torture you forever. Great, he created people. They he does not have to send them to at hell. At this point. Uh, my children do no. wrong. I'm not going to torture them for eternity. I'm going to drown them for a little bit. I'm going to take away some screen mm-hmm. time. I'm not going to stone them to death. I'm not going to send them to fire to burn. Yahweh does these things. This is not love. There is no love there is, when you there send has your child to, to die. There has to there be has justice. To be justice Great. Eventually. Take away my screen time. Don't kill me. Don't kill children. Don't starve children to death. Don't drown children. It's pretty simple. Forgive me without having to drown a child. This is what Yahweh does. That is not justified. You cannot tell me that killing your son to stop you from sending everybody to a torturous place is loving. There is no love in that. Where is the love? At the end of the day, listen. At the end of the day. No. Yes, um, it's hard. It is. um, It's impossible to find love, apparently. There's not love in that. For you, it is. For me, it isn't. So you look at that and you see love. You see this God sent his son to die because he was going to kill everybody anyways as love. What's in the end? Heaven? Evil think, ruins things. Evil God creates ruins evil. things. And Isaiah 45, if, 7 or 40, whatever that is. He creates evil, man. He says it in Isaiah. And, and people get to, a lot of people are uncomfortable with, with big evil and they're okay with little evil in their own life as long as they enjoy it somewhat, right? A big evil um, is torturing children. If you are I would okay. It's a pretty if big you evil. are okay. Uh-huh. If I'm okay. With some evil, um, so you have to be okay with your DD causing some yourself. evil. In yourself, no. Only myself. What about if myself? You're okay with some. If you're okay with some evil in yourself, and you excuse some evil in yourself, and this doesn't. This is. I'm not saying this is you or this is me. Right. 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 I'm just talking. In general, um, I get you. No worries. If you're okay with if you're okay with some evil in yourself, right. Mm-hmm. Um, we see things as people who are more have more good, or people who have more evil. I think of Churchill, right? Who was an amazing person, who um, like saved the world in one way, right? But he also neglected his family. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to be one of his kids, obviously, right? Because he he doesn't take time with him. They end up being alcoholics, right? His son dies before him. Did, did Churchill um, kill any of his? He's children? a very unhealthy. He's he's very unhealthy. Um, he decided to let Coventry be bombed, right? Because they knew they didn't want to let them did know he, right. So did he, do he the made some hard himself? decisions that involved in a bunch of um, innocent people being killed because he thought he there was greater the trigger, good. Yes, but, um, but mm-hmm. the big evil, right, that he stopped was Hitler, and we say he's a hero. The little evil that he lets live on is that he's a terrible father, but he justifies that because he's amazing in these other areas. If Hitler's he was a, dad mm-hmm. had come home and been a good father, um, and it's one well, thing that you know whatever you whatever you believe, yeah. I'm saying if Hitler's dad had been a good father, hey, who knows what that would have done? Churchill the guy would be who, unnecessary. Who taught him how to paint would have said his paintings were awesome. Maybe he wouldn't have killed Jews. That doesn't matter. Why does Yahweh kill Listen, children, and how is he a good God? If the guy who, if the guy who, um, it's because the if villain his dad is had, 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 is had taken, Satan's not so much the villain. Okay. Um, Satan is very little, right, compared to, to, compared to God. I would say that. Okay. 
Yeah, but 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 which is which is more of an argument for you than me, but it's what I believe yeah. is true. So so, so I'll, I'll leave it sit. Um, if we had a group of people who weren't okay with any evil mm-hmm. and who understood how ugly it was, that would be something that you could build a good world on, a good existence on. As long as people are okay to excuse the little evil in themselves that will grow into a bigger evil, right? Um, that's 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 um, right. that's a dangerous thing, and evil has to be dealt with. So ultimately, uh-huh. God is dealing with the problem of evil. He's dealing with it in a way that we may not, might not understand, but every human understands that there is evil. It is the like evil that he created. Why create evil? I don't think he created it. Oh, well, I think Isaiah forty-five is. seven. He created evil. You yes, think he, he creates created? things that are evil. Okay, okay so he always creates evil. I mean, he creates things that mess up. He brings problems on people. Why would he um, bring problems on people? That's not loving either, man. You're why wouldn't you let your, Why wouldn't you <laughs> let your children sit on a couch and eat Cheetos for their entire life? Holy cow! Um, dude, you're he, probably going to make them do some chores. You're probably going to make them do some things. The laws yeah, of life is, and then he kills somebody for picking up a stick. That's totally different than Cheetos on a couch, man. That's totally different. You're I know, and the problem with evil is a small little big discipline problem. With, with death or suffering and then death. That's not even close to the same thing. Why? World War II uh, was justified to stop Hitler, and we didn't take away people's screen time. We killed people. We, okay? killed, we killed Hitler and we killed Nazis. We didn't kill children in their sleep, did we? We killed a number of children in their sleep, but do you think that was a good um, thing? Again, if we had been all powerful, maybe we could have avoided doing that, right? Well, there so, you go. So that's not well, there you go. That's not necessarily a, a thing. I'm saying for uh-huh. you to say that that taking life, um, not all of the Nazis were evil people. I have a feeling there were many, many of the Allies that were morally worse people that may well, have joined sure. up because they wanted to kill people. And there are oh, many man. Nazis who joined up because they believed the thing. Right, and they were sincere and idealistic, and the kind of people who might have been better to build a world on than the people who were killing them. Right. Um, it's easy for me to see that to deal with a great evil, um, some some things like that that are ugly and messy have been necessary here. And I think I think seeing that play out, seeing World War II play out, helps me understand God slightly better. I don't mm. understand it, mm. but I understand that it might be a similar thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they don't I know that. I know that. I know that life is big, huh? right? The problem of evil is a really big problem that might be a problem that would last for eternity if not dealt with, causing who knows what kind of pain and suffering in the future. Um, right. I don't understand why God dealt with it in the way that He is, but this is what I believe. And again, the only way you can believe that is if you, like, right, you get a relationship with God and you say, "I trust Him, even though I don't get it." Well, that Which doesn't make any sense. I can't do that, man. I can't just I can't just ignore the slaughter of children. I can't uh, ignore you the, trust the, a lot the starvation, of starvation, though. I don't trust anybody that kills children, dude. You you tell me you starve children to death just for your own glorification, or just because somebody worshipped another deity, or because somebody showed utter contempt to you? That is not something I'm going to worship or follow. That is not something I would even respect at that point. But if I hear that you starved children, uh huh, even though they were your children and even though you loved them because uh-huh. you were trying to deal with the problem of evil for the benefit <laughs> of a million generations ahead of you, right? Oh man. Oh man. I so, might so, not agree with what you did, but I would understand that you had a Do you think there was another right. way? If you your children option? had a highly listen, if your children had a highly contagious disease, that if it got out would infect all of humanity. Um, it didn't and work. You chose, right? It didn't I'm work. Saying, he wiped, I'm saying he wiped there out is a kid for no reason, though. What? Because there's still, there's still evil in the world. It didn't work. Was there another option for Yahweh to take? Was there another option for Yahweh to take? I think that an option that cost less would have been worse. Is there a less. nonviolent way? To tell people not to do things and to correct their mistakes. Is there a nonviolent way to do that? Apparently, there is no way to deal with the problem of evil without massive suffering. Without mass killing. The flood, you've got the Passover. 
he, 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 he kills people in mass extinctions, not extinctions, uh, genocides, mass genocides. Why? Just so people will know he's God. Just so people will know what, what to do and what not to do. It Holy hasn't cow, changed man. them yet. What do you mean it hasn't changed them yet? They're dead. <gasps> I'm saying, you, I mean, you see that the world is just, I mean, perfect right now. I'm just saying the problem of evil, even with all of that, it wasn't enough to, it wasn't enough to deal with the problem of evil. And okay, at one point, not, he's with the children of Israel, and he says, children. listen, if I'm with you right now, he says, if I stay with you any longer, he talks to Moses, he says, I'm worried about this. He says, because I keep showing myself to them, I keep letting them see, right? By killing children. He keeps killing himself by killing then, children. And then they keep being so stupid, and he goes, I am, I'm worried about this, because if they're they keep doing other this, their guilt deities. is getting more and more. And I'm gonna, I'm going to end up killing them. So you need to take them, take them to a good place, settle them down. I'm not gonna be involved with them because I'm just making their guilt worse and worse, right? At the one point. And Moses says, um, don't leave us, stay with us. Um, you know, you know, and, and then we have this whole, we have this whole exchange. Mm -hmm. So, so he, is but he able to create a place without evil in it? Is he able to create a place without evil in it? I think that there is a great good of some kind Where? that I don't understand. Right. You just believe it's okay. there. You don't mm -hmm. see it. You believe that your subjective morality is is accurate and that you can judge everything in the universe based on it. So you have Holy cow, dude. In that. I believe that Listen. killing children to death, starving children to death for your own glorification, or killing children to death for your own glorification, is not good. We can both agree on that. I don't need objective mm -hmm. morality. I don't need subjective morality. I can tell you right now, no, that killing is children subjective. is bad. Killing children is bad, dude. I'm saying the fact that you trust the fact that you trust your own conscience, right? The fact, the fact that you trust your own, um, you believe that there is right and wrong. That it just I believe is. that I don't. You know what? And regardless of right it. or wrong, I don't care right or wrong. Killing children is bad. That is one thing that we can both agree on, correct? We don't need to go into all these little petty details about stealing a Snickers bar or something. This is I believe bad. that for me to kill children is bad. Is bad. I believe killing that for you to kill children is bad. Why is it Unless okay there's a very, Yahweh. very, very good reason. There's never a good reason. Let's just, let's just say that. Why is it good for Yahweh to do it? If I understood that, I would be and You would understand happy. the God that you worship, right? Then you would understand his motives. You would understand why he does certain things. You would have a relationship with this God. You would be able to talk to him, and he would be able to talk back to you, correct? So then you would know why. Have you asked him? Does he answer you? Have you asked him why he killed so many children in the Passover? I understand the more than I used to, but I don't understand everything, obviously. Okay, the same so way that somebody who, listen, in the same ahead, way hmm? that a CIA agent who has personally assassinated a number of people probably doesn't talk to their three-year-old about it. Probably doesn't come home and say, hey, daddy shot somebody in the head, but it was good. And let me explain to you why it was good that daddy shot somebody in the head today. No, but if that um, child asks the question, then the father will try and explain it in the best terms for him. So why don't you ask Yahweh why he kills children? And then, and then tell me what the answer is. Can you do that now, or do you have to wait? How does that work? I don't get do you not completely. Do you not talk to Yahweh? Like personally, I spend like, time with him sometimes. Sometimes okay. I hear from him pretty clearly. I feel like, like words. And like, again, like spoken. Um, I feel like spoken out words. I have not had that. Okay, so you don't know it's him. Um, where where I hear it like with my ears. I've been convinced that he talked oh. to me before. But so you're just convinced that's always you heard a subjective him, thing. But didn't hear him. Listen, that's always a subjective. That's clearly a subjective thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So is Yahweh able to create so, a place where there is no evil? I believe that if there was a less painful way to have done this and still accomplish whatever it is that he's trying to accomplish, you that don't know he would have done to it that way. Um, broadly, he's dealing with the problem of evil so that in eternity future, we don't have to deal with it ever again. Evil he um, And I think that maybe I disagree with that. Who created evil? That he that created creates evil. All things, right? I think he created freedom, and freedom created evil, and that in, and that in, the, that in the world, so he, as it he is, we have a choice happen. between freedom and evil. Listen, we have a choice between freedom and evil. 
right. because the only way we know how to get rid of evil is by arbitrarily um i mean is by curtailing freedom right because people are evil right. evil is in the world and we have to we have to I find myself to be an evil people, person um restrained or they will create or they will cause evil right but so whether or not we whether or not we consider you to be evil you agree that there is evil in the world and that in order to deal with that evil we have to to kill um, children curtail freedom of people <laughs> i'm saying humanity right now well y'all we have to kill children um, to get, get rid of you how many people would be good if they didn't know that if they murdered their you know ex-girlfriend's new guy that they would get put in jail, right? How many people are good because they have to be? Um, wow. It's hard to know that, but when society breaks down and suddenly there aren't rules and there aren't punishments and there isn't accountability, we discover that a lot of people are savages, right? Interesting. Um, so and, without Yahweh, ever, people are savages. Without Yahweh's rule of don't pick up sticks. Anyway, you know, so heaven, heaven I think is someplace he doesn't he created want without to have evil, a place right? where he says, don't be evil or I will punish you. I think the thought of hell uh -huh. has stopped a lot of evil in the world, even by people oh, yeah. who, right? I think the idea that there fear is, of the that there is ultimate justice sinning. and that um, the, the fear the of the, fear of the people cops people. keeps a lot of people from committing murder when they're very angry. Mm. Well, right? I think, I think, um, um if, if, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, the, the fear of the me. cops, the fact the cops that the cops have a gun, the fact that though. people are executed, the fact that people get put in prison keeps a lot yep. of people that would have been there not doing it. I think that's not ideal, and I think that real virtue is only worth something if it isn't coerced. Um, and I think that that might be where that's we're at. Right? So this is my best guess. Yeah, so. This is not what I get out of Scripture. This is my head. Right. Right. This is in all in your head. You're not, this is not biblically accurate. You're not taking this from the Bible. You're creating your own Because a lot of questions now. he just doesn't <clears throat> answer. Exactly. Right? Read the book of Job. Job of goes, questions. there's all this suffering. Oh God, it is seriously Job. unfair. And he goes, do you know everything? No, you don't. Um, right. And you're okay with Job. The and I don't understand. Okay I don't. <laughs> it's, a pretty, it's a pretty bizarre story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why did um, he have to kill I everybody to again? <laughs> Could he not just test Job to see if he loved him without killing all of his family? Yeah. 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 Did, how did he not um, know this? Doesn't he know everything? Yeah. Why does he need to test Job? And then he doesn't even know where Satan's at. Where's Satan? Where is he at? And Satan's like, yeah, I've been roaming the earth. He's like, oh, that's where you've been. Interesting story. Yeah, makes no sense. It is why interesting. Did, it is an why interesting did God story. create earth with full of full of flawed flawed people when he's able to create heaven, which is not full of flawed people, and there's no evil? Why could he not create evil or uh, heaven on earth to begin with? Um, why, why all this, just the pain, suffering, and death? Why does he choose death? Because in heaven, the angels uh -huh. knew everything, and when one of the angels decided to choose sin, having knowledge of everything, Where does that, that was say? an irredeemable mistake. Where does it say that? Um, Satan, right, uh -huh. used to be an angel, right? So Where does it say we that? Have, we have this story. It says it in the Old Testament. Um, I'm have this whole, right, uh, No, sorry, no. In the Old yeah. Testament, we got so, the whole so, story. So, again, I don't have the whole thing here. I got it right here for you. I got it right here for you. The king yeah. of Tyre. He talks about this king of Tyre and how he's going to punish this king of Tyre in his whole city. In the city, and all of a sudden somebody goes in the New Testament, hey, that sounds like somebody bad. Let's make that Satan. So now, all of a sudden, this king of Tyre is Satan. That's what happened, man. It, when you read the, the the Old Testament, there is not the word Satan. I'm sure that's when, a, I'm sure that's a, I'm sure that's a way to yes, and we we have the same thing with hell, right? Right. Um, hell they didn't know it was strongly wasn't... strongly talked about in the Old Testament because he he just says, listen, live this way, and your life is going to be better. Be right. good because it's awesome. He didn't threaten it with hell. Um, he in with the New death. Testament, in the New Testament, he does. Um, I I consider that more of a warning than a threat. Isn't the warning um, a threat? If you're threatening you know, to kill if somebody, I come in and tell you, if you don't somebody. leave this build, if I if I come inside and say this building is on fire, you need to get outside or you're going to burn. That's not what he um, said. That's though. not a threat. That's not the he thing. He comes into a building and says, "Get out, say, get out of the building! You. I'm going to shoot you." That's exactly what But he if said. the building is on fire and I come in and they say, "I don't believe that it's on fire," so then I pull out a pistol and say, "Well, do you believe this? Get out, or I'm going to shoot you." If you don't get out of the building, I'm going to shoot your children. That's what he says. I have this bomb. It's called hell. It's coming for you. I'm going to kill my son just so you don't have to go there. <laughs> How is that love, man? Where's the love? You still haven't shown me any love in this thing. 
Ah, great conversation though. I really appreciate it. Oh well, yeah, we need to we need to be. De- I I have a feeling that I won't convince you. Um, well, that's you not probably me. have a similar feeling yeah. about me. I'm not trying to convince um, you. I'm just here to get answers, man. But I like to and I like to I like to engage on some stuff like that because I do believe that at the end of the day, at the bottom of everything, um, truth is something that I want to know. Right. And the truth and is so that I try not to hide from I try always kill children. Not to hide from questions. That yes, is look, certainly a truth. I want you to go over the Exodus. Children. Go over the Exodus story again. I've Read it been from the over beginning. It many times. From the beginning to end, and 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 write down why Yahweh is doing the things yes. He is doing. His own. Confession. If I had written scripture, uh huh. If I had written scripture, mm-hmm. I would have written something that was fuzzier and easier to um, defend, and I would have left some of those things out of the story, which are included apparently for no reason other than to, I mean, some things I don't understand why it's included in the story. Uh-huh. Um, if I had written scripture, uh-huh. it also would probably be a book sitting somewhere on a shelf that nobody has ever read, right? Um, okay. Christianity uh-huh. works pretty well in a lot of things. It's worked really well in my life. I believe, ah. you may disagree with me on this, but yeah, I believe totally. that I have a relationship with God, right? But, but you don't talk about And him. my family has all believed this, mm-hmm. and their lives have gotten much better. Um, when my sister had an accident, and you may or may not believe, right, we all prayed. Um, wow. She yeah. should have been dead. She wasn't. Okay, so I believe this. Why did you need to pray? Didn't he see what was happening? Couldn't he just fix it without you having to ask him? Why do you have to ask him? You, I don't know. Another good question, man. Um, but I do know that anyone religion on comes up with a lot of questions. To ask him. Right, but why do we need to? Why can't he just do it? Why do what we have else, to ask him? What else do you have? I'm going to beg. Believing you. whatever, believing whatever is in your head, and just coming up with a theory of everything on your own, and then deciding to believe that. If I come into a um, doctor's office, believing that, with a believing that. They know exactly what's going on, and they can fix it. I don't have to be like, please, can you hurry? Oh, my God, can you help me? Oh, I'll give, I'll give the church money. I'll, I'll be good. I'll do this. I'll do that. Just help me. That's not how it works, dude, but that's how it works with Yahweh. With, with, with your God that you worship, he needs you to tell him and ask him, or else he won't do it. Apparently, yes. Mm. And, you, and he's loving. <laughs> this is a loving God. I don't understand all of it. I'm going to live my life this way. And uh-huh. I think that it's going to be um, a very good life. I know that Christ, like even broader Christianity, which I think a lot of Christianity isn't very biblical. Um, well, you can but, be a good person without worshiping a God that kills children. You can be a good person without worshiping a deity that starves children to death because their parents worshipped another deity. You can worship. You can you can be a good person without having to worship anything, especially something that kills I children. I think. That if you succeeded in convincing everyone in the world to think like you, that's scary. Uh-huh. That in the next thousand years, that would be worse for the world than if I Why? convinced everyone in the world to think like me. Why? Um, because I believe that the end result, um, the end result of believing that there is no God, that there is no right. Um, apparently, you do believe in good and evil. Uh, people do bad do things, I guess. People evil? do good things. I don't really know about the whole good. Yeah, and evil I mean, part. I think we both agree. I think we both agree, and we both believe in good and evil because that's like the core underpinning of this whole argument: is yeah. that there is a good and evil, and that you well, say God is evil. You're not saying my that core there is argument one. is saying killing children is, is bad. I call, we can both agree killing children is bad. Evil or good aside, killing children is never good or never a, a beneficial to anybody. It's not a beneficial act. It's, you it don't believe the child, that. It hurts the parent. Wow. Wow. You don't you believe God that. God thinks it's beneficial to kill children? <laughs> well, obviously he does. I'm he saying does there are situations where you would be – there are situations where you would understand that, that it's no. not always a – it's always a yes or no question. It's an either or there question. There is never a good and reason to kill a child. And there are probably situations um, where you never would, a good but, reason to starve a child to death. There's never a good reason to drown a child especially for the reasons that Yahweh gives, because he's going to punish their, their, the, for the sins of their fathers up to the third and fourth generation? Holy cow! And then you're telling me he's loving. Man. 
I have a problem yeah. with a god that kills children. It's the basic that's the basic issue of it, I guess. And you don't. Listen. You're s- I've got to leave. <laughs> but Okay, no worries. Uh, I want to so I want to keep going so bad. I can um, call you back another time. No worries. He, he, he's a <laughs> Um there is he um you think about death, right? Pain that results in death. Um I've hurt significantly in my life, right? Whatever, not as much Who as has a lot it? of people. Who has I've it? gone yeah. a lot right, all of us have all of us have hurt. Mm-hmm. Um and when you say it in that way it's so dramatic. But <laughs> I've just got several days without eating. Way, I guess, huh? <laughs> okay. Right. I've done things, and I know this. This is like this is not a conversation that I would normally be in. I'm just talk, I'm just talking it out because this is usually the stuff that's inside my head that doesn't get out of my mouth, right? Um, because most people don't think about it, and I'm not I'm not well, necessarily going to give it. them stuff that they don't have that they don't have. I guarantee the ability you there are a lot of people through. thinking about these same questions. They are struggling yeah. with them, and nobody talks about it, and they just put up a face uh, wall I do. and ignore it. Well, we're talking about it. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're one of the few. Yeah. So, um, and again, uh, it took, it, I mean, I'm going to do something with my life. I have a fairly short one, right? Um, I'm pretty serious about being a Christian. I've given my life to it. Um, can you I'm be good without being a Christian? I spend my time. I think that by definition, if you're fighting against the one who's doing more good in the world than anyone else, that that puts you on the wrong side. Do you think I'm fighting um, against them? I don't know that. Hmm. Really. Hmm. Um, you called. You called. You called here, and you said you want to know. And I right. think that's a right. cool way to have said that, rather than. Um, and again, throwing out. I stuff, think. Yeah. 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 Um, if you want to debate. And you're like you have a you have a thing for debating. I kind of like that too. <laughs> um, I like to use I like to use my brain. Just like you know, it's fun to run if you're fast at a knife. Okay, this is this is that's a terribly terribly honest thing to have just said. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you're a little bit that way yourself because you laugh at the at the at the beautifully controversial moments instead right, of being right. disturbed. Yeah. So no, you're a little no, bit that way. The uh, um, I do believe it, right? And so that's, right. that's at the at the end of the day, I actually believe this, um, and I'm willing you know, to give my life for it. I spend. Why I spend, do you believe I, it? I, I believe. Mm-hmm that I know God and that he has helped me a lot in my life. And I believe on the basis of, of relationship, which you may or may not acknowledge that I have. And again, so, so this is not something that can stand up in a court of law. I'm just saying this is what's inside of me. Right. Um, and, and again, on a subjective level, Mm -hmm. when I feel the presence of God, I think that that is good. And I think that he loves me. How do you um, know that the president? And I God, know that if he was all think? powerful, uh huh. Do you ever do anything? Do you ever do anything more than think? You don't get certainty in life. You have to decide on things that you're not certain of. Certain of. Oh yeah. Well, um, I mean, this is kind of a big. And movie. I think that God intended for it to be that way because I think at the at the end of the day, you. I say at the end of the day too often. That's okay. <laughs> um, this is this is kind of an at the end of the day conversation, right? Yeah. Like, like I guess kind yeah. of the 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 first things. Um, I think that this is good. I think this is. I think that the thing that I have right now is a thing that I want. And I think that the part of the Christianity, not just the community part of it, because sometimes I'm frustrated with the community part of it. Uh huh. I think the part of it that I have, that's my relationship with God. I believe that that's real, mm-hmm. and I believe that it's that it's worth more 
than the things that there's some things that I would like that I can't have with it, right? It costs me something to live the way I've chosen to live and to try to actually do what Scripture says, right? What, what does it? Um, no, what does it, what does it cost you? I was 99th percentile on my SATs. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I was I I had a full ride scholarship if I had left to go do some stuff. Uh-huh. I decided I grew up in a little Christian school here. Yeah. Right. Um, there were people that cared about me and loved me. They were all Christian people. They cared about me deeply. And I know there's people of other religions that have had people that were religious people care about them deeply. Right. Right. Um, Good. I had the happiest childhood that I think anyone on earth ever has. Okay. Mm-hmm. God God was – I. the things that I see that praying does for my father are things that I want. What about right. the people that doesn't have a very for. deep respect? What about the children who grew up in Christian homes that aren't very happy? I have people in – if their parents did what Scripture says. Oh, um, man. Not, then they would be stoned to death if they Not if people heard. did what Yahweh does. <laughs> Listen. If people did what Scripture says for them to do, not what Scripture says other people have done uh-huh. or that Yahweh has done. If people did what Scripture said for them to do. And uh-huh. I know there's other religions that have moral teachings, right? Because every religion right, right. has moral teachings. Good job. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Christianity that I've seen in my family mm-hmm. and the Christianity that I grew up with works better than anything I've ever seen in my life, and it's wow. something that I would that I'm that I'm willing to right. So again, I I don't have experience of everything in the world, right? But I so, think that it works, right? Some of the kids in my class are very messed up. Their parents have come out of prison. <laughs> they're, they're right. They're, they're, they come from mean, really, really bad situations. That doesn't mean and that y'all is all life. of a sudden very awesome. I know, Listen. I know people who have grown up in atheist homes who are amazing people, who have done amazing things, mm-hmm. who've grown up to be very stable people. Yes, a that lot of atheists are really, God really moral. Right. Um, they almost have like more of a kick to be moral than some people that claim to be Christians and then, think that wow. makes everything okay, and then go on and do their own, right? We've both seen this in the world. Um, wow. Well, you're, you're just so kind of grouping a whole I lot don't of... Stick up. I don't stick up for all Christians. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of stuff is a mutual benefit society where they, where they all join a club that does benefits for members, um, but is tax-exempt, right? Wow. Um, I, don't like, I don't like a lot of what happens in the name of Christianity. Clearly, the stuff in the Middle Ages... That what exactly in the name right, of Christianity? Right. Yeah. But what exactly good. do you follow on a daily basis? I believe the Christianity that the Apostle Paul had, Apostle Paul's Christian, was a beautiful thing that made him willing to give himself and sacrifice himself for um, what See, he like believed. Paul's religion. The Apostle Paul said, "Gotcha." Um, if there isn't a resurrection, if there isn't a second world. Right, uh-huh. right. Because, um, then we are of all men most miserable. Uh-huh. Um, I don't feel I feel pretty you, blessed, but at the same time, I know that you that. Do you believe that? Like all men are miserable without Jesus? <laughs> no, he was saying he was saying I wouldn't be doing the things I was doing if I didn't believe that there was a heaven some would day. Okay, that's what I'm so, saying. That's it. That, that's it. The only reason um, he's doing the things he's doing because he believes there's a heaven. So even if it's that way, that uh, that's okay. Um, isn't there like a humanistic way we can go about things? You know, love your brother, you do do everything, for, you know, help out other people, and without a, a oh, deity that Hitler was children? an amazing humanist. I like. Oh, he wasn't. Hitler he was killed mad. people. I think he was right. No, listen. Whoa! Listen. How is he no, a humanist? But humanists are too. humanists are humanists are moral, and they never have a good reason. I mean, it's always it's what? always a subjective thing. What? Um, no. Wait. Hitler said, "Listen, what do you think it a makes sense." Is? Um, what do you think a human Hitler, is? Hitler says we're going to. He says we're going to cause less suffering in the future, right? By killing He's Jews? trying to be moral. There's moral underpinnings to what he says. Obviously, at the bottom of the day, Hitler's a very selfish person. But a lot of the people who followed him were very idealistic and thought they were doing something good in the world by making a new golden age that had like the Catholic Church people with the capacity to be happy, right? Like, like, like. With the Catholic Church um, and they yes. supported him. And I, yeah, so, so like I don't Yahweh, put myself in a box with the Catholic Church anymore. To make the future better. So like Yahweh, Hitler kills children to make the future better. Is that what you're telling me? Um, with with the 
with not with him, but with many of the people that followed him with the best of moral intentions. Hmm. Um, so I don't believe that like coming to a consensus of things that we all agree are moral. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't believe that that's I believe that's kind of a that's where you're going after a changing goal. I'm Um, just just trying to figure out why you worship a God that kills children. But you seem to be okay with this and you keep going to Hitler. I'm not sure why you keep going to Hitler when Hitler. Hitler's just the easiest example to use of like something that we all agree is evil, even you and me both. Something right? bad. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, and then, Hitler but, but is I more, correlate, Hitler is... I, I connect your God with Hitler in the fact that he kills children in order to make the future better in his mind. In Yahweh's mind, yeah. he's slaughtering these children to make the future a better place. In Hitler's mind, he's gassing Jews to make the place, to make the earth a better place. This is all in their own yeah. head. When is it and okay so you for say I have a different make... memor- listen right. you say I have a different anybody. morality right i'm you not going to say i have a different for... morality right right because okay. i don't believe it's good to kill say... people i do not believe oh, it's good agree, to have agree. blood christianity right. would have christianity would have stopped hitler if there was if 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 no way it had, would have joined it, it had... hey cool man let's go kill some kids and make the world a better place Oh man, God! Yeah, right. If you were that saying thing. this stuff about my, and again, I'm, I'm like, I'm really. If you were saying this stuff about, if I was saying things like this about your girlfriend or your wife, my girlfriend doesn't I'm, kill kids in sir, their sleep. In their sleep. Listen, your God listen, does though. Uh, it's completely different. We can agree that's different, right? So I can agree that your girlfriend and God are different. Right? Okay. Yeah, my girlfriend they're, not, they're my staying wife. in a different place. So with that, my wife, what? she doesn't kill kids in their yes. sleep. I say, I'm saying girlfriend because I have one of those. I know yeah. Okay. Um, at this point. So I, I didn't mean that in any any way no. that way. Or like being no, just, no, no, no. Uh, thought I corrected you. Don't take me that record. <laughs> I didn't mean that that way whatsoever. Anyways, the... Uh, I like it. You... It's, 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 I like some of the places my brain is going on this. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think we're going to get to the end of it today. No, definitely not. It is a good conversation Um, though. I do appreciate it. It has been, it has been, it has been a good conversation and I, and I appreciate that. I don't, I don't, um, understand all of that. And I think, I think that, um, You know, it is somewhat subjective, my belief. I just think that your belief is also somewhat subjective because you, you, you take the same. You have a morality. You say that it doesn't match with God's morality, even though the <laughs> questions that you deal with are infinitely smaller than the questions he's dealing with, right? Like the problem of evil in general. The evil um, that he created. Which we will argue he... Which I don't, which I don't, yeah. I don't accept. Right? But he's able but to you, create you a world say, You have a scripture that says, I created evil. Right, and he's able uh, to create a world without evil in it. He's capable of doing it. I that. disagree on that as well. You don't think he can create... Well, what do you think heaven is? Heaven is a world without evil, is it not? Can we sin in heaven? And heaven isn't the world. But God created it, did he I'm not? saying heaven, there is no freedom. There's no freedom in heaven? Heaven, heaven is one strike and you're out. Like, heaven is... Which, which you say that the New Testament... You said that the New Testament thinks about... Satan are not about Satan because they can be correlated oh. to a prophecy about a king in the Old Testament. Um, I believe yeah. the New Testament, right? See, right? see what I'm saying? So, so I do, I do believe that it's. But do if you, you think don't, those authors had the same the New Testament the, because of that. Do you think the authors of the Old Testament had? I think the, a the, lot of things in scripture New? have a double meaning. No, no. Do you right? think the authors of the New Testament had the Old Testament to go off of? Um, a lot of pieces of it, yes. So I mean, they, 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 they the didn't have the King so of Tyre, clear. and they changed it to Satan. It doesn't say Satan. Yeah, Jesus Jesus. Quotes, Jesus quotes things and changes things. Right? Do not change. Way. Oh, man. He's changing um, and things I'm in the Bible. I'm not comfortable doing that with Scripture. Yeah, no. God says not to do that. Um, God says don't change it. He says for me not to do it. He doesn't say that Jesus can do it or that. Uh, somebody, true. Right, right. True, um, I guess and I do believe person. that it's possible for things to have it. I, I do believe that it's possible for things to have, it, to have more than one meaning, right? right. Uh, in fact, we're like clearly, a lot of things in the Old Testament clearly have several meanings. Mm. Um, yeah, but he's pretty clear about certain a, things. 
Okay, okay, the whole the whole lamb being killed thing, right? Like lamb, a lamb dies in place of you. A lamb dies in place of you. And then right. he says, "Look, I'm coming to die in place of you." Hebrews nine twenty two. Um, Without the shedding of blood, there is like. no forgiveness. Without the mm-hmm. shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. This is the God you're telling me is love. He cannot forgive you unless something is dead. In but the, he's loving. Um, he's loving though. He end of convers- end of conversation, and we'll have another one sometime if you want. Um, oh, but I've, I've, I've got to go now. Um, Appreciate it. I'm very curious where you come from because you clearly are um, – I think it's cool that you're spending time engaging with Scripture or either that or you looked up something on the Internet. But I have a feeling you might actually have read this thing. I have um, read it. the whole thing, man. Love it. Love it. Okay, cool. So so you've, you've, you've engaged with Scripture. You clearly don't believe it. Right. Or you believe it and you think it's bad. Well, um, I think it's bad to kill children in their sleep for their for your own glorification. I think it's bad to starve children to death because they're worshiping another deity. So yeah, I, I pick up the Bible listen. and I read a bunch. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious where do you, where do you come from? Like what what what's your background? Are you like grew, former oh, Christian? Like, I grew up in a Christian former, home, home yeah. and didn't like them. Former Christian. Um, former Christian picked I up the Bible him, and started I reading believe it. it. Former Christian picked up the Bible, started reading it. Holy cow, why was I a Christian? <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah. And then I'll, Do you also feel like your, your Christianity questions. didn't work? Dude. As far as, I'm just, I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. Like, no, no, yeah, like, no, no. like, did you respect the other Christians as well? Did you feel like these are good moral people, but they're wrong, or did you? Oh like no, these, yeah, no. I don't think these are moral monsters, moral. like like the God that they worship. I just think they're confused, either confused or they just don't look into what they believe, and that's why I'm curious. Yeah. And that's understand. true of a lot of people. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people make their decision on way less information from both sides. Right, pick uh, up the Bible and read it. Read why Yahweh does the things he does. Read his justifications for slaughtering children. Yeah. And and you'll have a lot of questions and no answers. And when you talk to this, this deity, I have got a lot of he, questions. Yeah, he doesn't answer. I also There's, get a lot of answers, and the answers that I get are more the things that I need answers to, not existential questions, right? Not the big um, question. He's just going to give you little things. He's not going to tell you the big question. The big answer. You no, know, he gives me he gives me little things like everything that I need to have an amazing life. Okay. Um, so he doesn't okay. he doesn't always tell me why he did things in eternity past or why he's done things in history on some of the things. Did you know um, that so I have an amazing life as well, and I do not worship mm-hmm. a god that kills people? I I have an mm-hmm. amazing life. I have an amazing wife. I have amazing kids. I don't need Yahweh. That's awesome. To have an amazing I mean, life. it's awesome that you do that. Stuff, I don't need you Yahweh to show love or compassion towards somebody. I don't need to kill something in order to forgive somebody. I hope mm-hmm. that your beliefs, but again, if it's an honest belief, it's better to, I mean, I'd rather you be honestly a skeptic than to pretend something because you think it might have a good result, right? I think that's very dangerous when you... Right. I think it's very healthy um, to look into your strongly held beliefs and question uh, them. And, and and question your reasonings for believing them, and question yeah. your reasonings. Listen, for, yeah, go ahead. So as we raise our kids, I have mm-hmm. a feeling that you're going to be strongly moral your whole life. Um, I have a feeling that I'm going to be strongly moral my whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, and that you're going to be the kind of a person, right? That would be that would be excellent. I I have a feeling. This is just, I know this can be super insulting, but I preface, I was about to say this earlier and I prefaced it by saying you have been, you know, you've definitely, you, you're like not nasty, but you have been said stuff that you know is like very insulting to Christian. Um, just now? So just forgive me for, no, I'm saying in this whole thing, I'm not hurt. I'm oh. just saying, you've got to forgive me for saying this. Okay. Um, no, you know, I don't think it's just kind of, kind of on the thing. Your grandkids and my grandkids might show a difference in, 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 what their lives are like. Um, both of us will probably live fairly similar lives. We'll probably prioritize our families. We'll take care of our kids. We'll try to do the things that are the right. Um, uh-huh. I think that the way you're thinking mm-hmm. is wrong. And if I didn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be living the life that I'm living. Um, What's wrong about the way I'm thinking? I've read scripture many times. 
I've, I've spent an hour saying that. Okay. Oh, yeah. You don't accept what I have said, <laughs> but I also no, don't accept I guess what not. you've said. So we'll just, we'll just leave it for a second. All right. Um, but I think, so that, that's kind of my concluding, that's, that's kind of my, you know, if, if, cool. if we'll call it that, that's kind of my concluding statement. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think that it's, I think that it's real. I think that God is good. And I think that his way is ultimately going to be better. And you say right. that you can have a morality without him. I mm-hmm. think that we need him to keep that up over time, over generations, over, um, over generations, that over, overall for eternity future, hmm. um, that we need him. So you don't think my kids could possibly um, follow Yahweh down the line? <laughs> Um, it's possible that your kids will be just like you. It's a possible that they'll be completely different. For the different. sake of the world, for the sake, <laughs> for the of, the sake world, of the world, I hope that they are more like you instead of right, right. Because clearly, you're you're a thinking person who's trying to be moral. Right, um, right. I find out if something's going to harm somebody, and I don't do it. That's it's pretty it's pretty easy. It's, I don't have to kill anybody. I don't have to threaten anybody's children. I mean, I, I disagree with you that it's pretty easy. Oh well, it's easier because than threatening. In, it's easy not to threaten the, children. At, it's easy not to kill children. Next so World way. War II, there's going to be more. There's going to be more decisions, right? Um, mm. That are hard. I'm just saying that that just because your life doesn't require you to make any very difficult moral decisions um, that involve human life, doesn't mean that in the life of the world and the universe that those decisions don't have to be made. But. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. You've made a lot of very good <laughs> points, and I've enjoyed this conversation very much. And uh, call me sometime. All right. Good to talk to you, man. You too, man. I will talk to you later. Thank you. Have a nice later. day. Later. Bye. That's all the podcast we have for you today. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show and want to help us keep the lights on and the coffee flowing, then stop by our Patreon page today and sign up to be a supporter of the show for as little as a dollar an episode. As always, you can find us on the Bible Says What Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages. Please send all of your questions, comments, or hate mail to bswthepodcast at gmail.com. That's bswthepodcast at gmail.com. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them? 